RS6 Performance. Now, I looked back on previous videos to see when was the last time that I featured the RS6 on the channel. It turns out it was February. February! What's going on? I can't believe it. I mean, because I drive the car so often, I guess to me it feels fresh. But I couldn't believe it. So the last time I drove the car on the channel was actually comparing it with uh, the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo, which kind of nicely brings me on to the future of this car uh, and the future of that space in itself. And what I mean by that space is the sort of super estate cars. Now, when this car launched, when this generation of the RS6 launched, it was still kind of the only real proposition in the super estate market. It's been a long time since BMW had an M version of an estate car. And yes, while Mercedes did have the E63, the way that the space has evolved since this car has launched, the competition simply didn't exist. And so I want to talk about the future of this car, uh, how it's going to sit uh, in the coming months on this channel, what might be replacing it, and also discussion of the space in general. Now, there's been something about the super estate market which has become fascinating of late. Now, the previous video to this was actually me driving the Ferrari GTC4 Lusso, the V12 version. Previously to that, I'd driven the V8. And while I guess, strictly and technically, that is more of a uh, hot hatch <laughs> because it is a uh, hatchback format. I do think its fundamental platform does land itself smack bang in competition with cars like this, despite the fact that the GTC4 Lusso, particularly the V12 version, is an additional £200,000 on top of the price of this car. <laughs> I mean, when I drove it, I'm blown away predominantly by, and I'm sure regular viewers of this channel know the words about to come out of my mouth, but provisionally blown away by the gearbox and the relationship of that gearbox with that wonderful V12 engine. It was like driving a four-seater F12, which, I mean, really, in terms of exciting but practical cars, where do you go from there? A four-seater F12, that's essentially what it is with four-wheel drive, so it genuinely is a practical car. Having said that, an element of practicality was stripped out of it because it was a two-door. It is, like I said, more of a hot hatch. They've sort of compromised on the complete practicality by making it a two-door coupe. However, nothing beats practicality like a general all-round four-door car. Now this and the Panamera Sport Turismo, which is a product that did not exist when this car launched, these two, for me, still sit at the top of the chain in terms of super estate cars, super practical wagons. Now, I guess as well, at the same time, a product which also didn't exist at that time was Mercedes E63 4Matic. Now that car, I had the luxury of driving actually around a circuit. I drove it around Silverstone, and that was the, the S version, the E63S 4Matic. That's a four-wheel drive E63 AMG. Again, four-wheel drive AMGs when this car launched did not exist in the estate car market. And so all of a sudden, where this car used to reign champion, there are now all of these other brands and platforms encroaching on its format. The interesting thing for me is that because Porsche and Volkswagen and Audi, they're part of the same group, I'm questioning where the future of this car lies. This always used to be at the top of the super estate cars, but now they have the Panamera Sport Turismo. Now to clarify that there's a Panamera and there's a Panamera Sport Turismo. The Sport Turismo is basically what I would classify as Porsche's RS6. And why it's, I wouldn't say concerning me, but because they're inherently from the same group and a similar family, I'm wondering if the next RS6, which I believe will be launching or at least announced next year, 2019, will the VAG Group allow the Audi RS6 successor to be better, and when I say better, I mean more powerful than the Porsche equivalent. It's probably unlikely, right? I mean, the Porsche, for a very well-specced Sport Turismo, you're looking, at least the turbo, you're looking around about £130,000, which is vast coin, do not get me wrong. 
will they push the RS6 that far? I'm not sure. Now, the rumors that I picked up on, and please accept these as purely rumors. I have nothing tangible of which to back this up, but I'm hearing and hoping that there's gonna be two model variations of the RS6 when it launches. Um, and I've also heard that it will maintain a V8 engine, which when you drive this thing, you'll be very happy. Now, the generation before this, was actually a twin turbocharged V10 engine. As in the V10 engine that was in the Lamborghini Gallardo and later on the R8 V10. Now they have managed to twin turbocharge that car and make it incredible. It sounded fantastic and it was incredibly fast. And when this car launched and it was downsized to the V8, you know, purists and enthusiasts of the RS6 at that time were like, what, why have you got rid of the V10? That's such a shame. But when you drive this, it's such a more sophisticated engine. It's got fantastic torque, wonderful power, and the drivability and usability of it is superior to the old V10, even though on paper it doesn't sound quite as exotic. And I think history is kind of repeating itself because if you look at cars like the RS5, They've downsized the engine, but the performance is still there. Now, the rumor is, coming back full circle to the beginning of this topic, the rumor is that they're still gonna maintain the twin turbocharged V8, which is now found in the Lamborghini Urus, which is, I believe, the fastest SUV out there. Um, so if they maintain that, that would be fantastic. But what else is on the radar, which excites me greatly, is the notion that there might be a second option of the same car, which will be a hybrid RS6. Now, once again, do not hold me to this. This is just rumors and chats that I've picked up on my various travels around these wonderful cars. But the video before this excited me at the prospect of replacing this with a low mileage pre-owned GTC4 Lusso sometime next year. The aim of the game is that this car will probably get replaced next year sometime. But I really wanna wait for the replacement of this car to be announced. And if they do a hybrid version, imagine the torque. Imagine the torque of this thing. I mean, it already pulls like a mule on crack, but with a hybrid bolted onto it as well. Now, if you think about it, that format actually already exists in the Panamera. They, they share a very similar drivetrain. Speaking of drivetrain, what I hope is gonna come next is potentially an upgraded gearbox. Now, when the car launched, and I've always been a, somewhat of a gearbox snob, but from a practical car point of view, I've been able to live with the fact that this isn't a dual clutch gearbox. Even though it's incredibly quick, most of the time I'm not grabbing it by the scruff of its neck and driving it 10 tenths. I am using it as a daily practical driver, but it is wonderful to have that power and the braking performance when you need it. This one, it was optioned with the optional carbon ceramic brakes, but Things have evolved and twin clutch gearboxes are becoming more commonplace in high performance cars. And this is why I wanna draw parallels between the Panamera Sport Turismo from essentially the same group. That runs a fantastic dual clutch gearbox. In fact, the best gearbox in the world as far as I'm concerned is the Porsche PDK. It is an audible tone change of cog maneuvers. Honestly, it's, it's so seamless, it's so fantastic. When I drove this car last on this channel, back to back with the Panamera Sport Turismo, that was one of the things which was highlighted the most was the sophistication leap of the Porsche gearbox over this. This is a conventional eight-speed torque converter box. Generally okay, but when you're really on it, particularly under heavy braking and downshifting, it's not always there for you. Now Porsche have recently made their PDK gearbox with a car which I've also driven recently, which arguably kind of encroaches on this space as well, which is the new Bentley Continental GT. They managed to fit that gearbox to a W12 twin turbocharged engine. Now, that just shows how far the evolution of the PDK gearbox has come. To be able to deal with that much torque through a twin clutch gearbox is an engineering marvel. And what I'm hoping is, or let's everyone hope, and everyone write to Audi and go, look, can you just dip in the group pool and fit one of those fantastic gearboxes to the next RS6? Because I have a feeling 
these guys are gonna have to pull every trick out of the bag in order to keep up with the competition. And the gearbox for me would be one of those things. Mating it with a hybrid drivetrain, maintaining that twin turbocharged V8. We're looking at 650 horsepower. I mean, that's awesome. This thing, this is the performance model, and no doubt they will be doing an evolution of the new RS6 halfway through its life cycle. The performance version basically upped the power of this car to 605 brake horsepower out of the factory stock. Serious poke for something with five seats and a boot big enough for, well, life generally. Now imagine if they stuck on a hybrid system, twin clutch, gearbox, four-wheel drive, and for me personally, the aesthetics still of the RS6, even though it's getting a little bit long in the tooth now, I think the front of this car is still the meanest in its category. When I parked it next to the uh, Panamera Sport Turismo, from the outside I just felt that the Porsche just looked quite soft, considering its power. It just looks soft. You put this next to it, it's a very brutish car. It's got such a fantastic stance to it. Now, halfway through my ownership cycle of this car, I also upgraded the exhaust. Now, Porsche haven't necessarily got the best sounding turbocharged cars right now. This car, the pops and bangs on the overrun from factory were wonderful, but we upgraded to the Audi Sport Akrapovich exhaust. <laughs> exhaust it can sometimes invalidate the warranty on your car but because this exhaust was developed in conjunction with a Krapovich and Audi your warranty is maintained you can have it fitted at Audi and that's exactly what I did and for me it, it just drew out a whole new lease of life from this car not that I was getting bored of it at all but it just enhanced it where every time you downshift like this and you hear those pops and bangs which are <laughs> glorious you are reminded that you are in something quite special and I'm hoping that they're able to do that on the car next time so yes what I'm talking about right now and what I'd love your uh, predictions thoughts and feedback on as always is what do you think the future of this car should be now I've just done over 31,000 miles I do use it a lot and as mentioned that the last time you guys saw it was February so it has had a lot of lifespan to whack on a load more miles up until now I'm so happy with it and over 30,000 miles it's began to free up a bit the way that the engine spools up it feels lighter less friction internally it's just bedded in and because I've ran it in from day one from new I know that this engine is now sweet and sound and it's been incredibly reliable uh, the only problem I've had has been a cracked windscreen and that is that is it everything else about this car it has not skipped a beat and so 30,000 miles to me feels like I'm just getting started so far fantastic but I am very excited for the future of this platform the RS lineage from Audi has developed this cult following, this cult status. It has such a strong, passionate user base and fan base. This car has been one of the most popular cars on this channel. I don't know what it is, but it has universal mass appeal. I think it's because it ticks so many boxes. I'm not aware of any car that ticks quite as many boxes as this. The GT3 isn't far off, but of course, in terms of practicality, it doesn't come anywhere near this car. It's got five seats. It's ridiculous. Big boots, four-wheel drive, super usable, and 
on top of all of that, it's really, really fast. It's like really fast. And together with carbon ceramic brakes, I also upgraded the tires to Michelin Pilot Sports. These Cup 2s on here are wonderful. It's changed the whole grip level versus the tires it came with stock. But everything as a complete package, I honestly think, people ask me this all the time, if you were to have one car, this car is up there. It's so hard to ignore. So right now, this video really is about discussing the future of this platform, the future of this car, this specific car to this channel, uh, and what might come next. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys as to what other super estate you would like to see on the channel. Now, bearing in mind, this won't be replaced until next year. So it's not going just yet, but I still want to plan and hear your thoughts on it because ultimately this channel exists because of you guys. And I want to know where you would like to see it go. Would you like to see this stay for much, much longer? Uh, would you like to see it feature on the channel more often? I think that kind of goes without saying. I can't believe that this last week in February. I'm actually sorry about that. Like that's, that's not cool because I know you guys enjoy this car, as do I. Um, but ultimately, one day it will go. The time frame is next year sometime, uh, even though I don't know what the lead time will be on an order slot on the new RS6. They might announce it, and again, I don't know this for fact, but they might announce this car, I don't know, Geneva next year, which is March time. And then it'll probably be six, maybe an eight month lead time until it actually turns up. So it could be this time next year or even later that a new RS6 even shows itself. So we still got plenty of time to enjoy and share with you guys the format of this car. So comments below. Uh, there's some big things coming on the channel over the next few weeks. One of them uh, I can't believe is actually happening and I can't wait to share with you. Please do stay tuned, like, comment and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. And I shall see you next time. <laughs> Ciao.